18 Blood Eagle four cylinder. And I'm Kale Maven, driver of the number 17 Legend car. And I'm Levi Morris, driver of the M80 Legend car. Hey, yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back here for another week, another episode of the Blood Eagle Racing Podcast. A little different today. Kale and Levi, they're hard at work um, getting stuff done, you know, here in the off season on the cars. So, you know, they, so they couldn't make it. Um, I might have them on here later, you know, just to chit chat, but I know for right now they're a little bit too busy. So brought in a real good friend of mine, um, someone who's actually helped, uh, you know, pretty much me start this podcast, David Rogers from Chicken Bone Alley Podcast. What's going on, David? What's up, man? I'm I'm just going to say Kale and uh, Levi were probably the smart ones because that's probably where I need to be is working on my, my legend car and, uh, nah, nah I'm, uh, I'm chilling out. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I got a. I, I'm I'm with you in the same boat. I got a huge to do list and uh, just haven't really been done. Haven't really been doing anything. Um, main thing is though parts, man. Parts is it's hard to get for stuff for anything right now. Yeah, it's it's rough. I've been talking with um some of our sponsors and stuff like Earl Ramey Racing Engines, uh, for example. I've talked with him and man, it has taken him forever. He was building a super late model motor for somebody not long ago, and it took him like two months to build it just because every part that he ordered was back ordered and uh, and i know it's like that for everything so it sucks but i'm hoping it's uh coming around here soon yeah yeah for sure yep but um so i mean i don't know if uh if you actually ended up did you watch any like the um uh like any of the races down volusia over the past week i didn't yeah, uh, um, I caught some highlights from Volusia, um, unfortunately, because I've been ridiculously busy with, you know, everything else, obviously, that I don't need to be doing other than watching Volusia and stuff, but I, <laughs> I tried to catch a few little things last night. Yeah, yeah, I, I know, I watched, um, we had a, a few races of it, I think it was the 602s and stuff were out, and I tell you what, that track was rough the night I was watching, I don't know if it got better. Or got maybe worse, but I know those 602 late models were catching some air, especially coming um in the middle of uh one and two. Well, we had uh Dale McDowell on our uh, podcast uh after Volusia, and um yeah he uh he, he fortunately he won at Volusia, but uh he talked about it and how horrible it was and. But he said he he didn't feel too bad, which I guess when you're the uh, fast car out there, it all feels good to you. So, uh, I was, <laughs> but I saw some of the carnage from it. It was pretty bad. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they they were getting uh, that one rut was so bad that the um, uh, one of the six oh twos ended up getting stuck. Like they had to come out and you know give him a push so he could get off it because it was like I said there was a big dip and he was kind of like bottomed out and there was cars catching Jeez. air and stuff. It was it was insane. You think you know something. You know, they, they build up so much hype and stuff for that. And, I mean, it was, I mean, i never been down to Volusia, you know, but um, I like the shape of it and stuff. So, you know, there's going to be some good racing there. But with the track conditions and stuff, I mean, really would, you know, they, they, they did the best they could. But um, Well, that's what, that's what I was fixing to say is, um, and I've been down to Volusia a, couple, a few times now. Their track crew there, honestly, is probably second to none. So it's really bad when something like that happens. I know they had a lot of weather move through, and and that's that was their problem. Is uh, I thought the week leading up to those races, it rained constantly. So what happens down in Florida, especially that area, is it's so flat. Is water? <laughs> there's nowhere for it to run off to, so it just sits and it it permeates the ground. I guess you say, and it just gets so deep in there that even if you get the top layer you know, hard or packed in or whatever. Once it breaks through that, you just got mud up underneath it. So that, that's what they have to deal with down there. So uh, I, I hate it for Volusia really because that's a uh, cool track. Uh, it's cool, and they always put on a good show down there. So, uh, But I bet here in the next couple of weeks or next week or so, they'll probably be back on top of their game. Yeah. And we Actually, we deal with the same stuff. So whenever, um, like the first race or two, especially during practice, because all of our snow melted, you know what I mean, and, and how you were saying it just right. sits. So once you start, the, normally the first race or two, um, it can get a little rough. You'll have some holes, and after that, it's good. So I mean, I imagine them guys down there, they'll you know they'll, they'll get it together and they get that track in tip top shape. It just yeah, I, I agree with you. I did know that there was a lot of weather through. I mean, that's the only thing that can really cause that, really. Yeah, yeah. But um, 
one thing I got a I got a bunch of weight um, on my chest and I need to get it off. I was watching up Screvern, uh the winter freeze last night. You know the big um, the big race you know for the SCDRA series and uh, I tell you I I've not I have not been so mad whenever I was watching you know a race and probably forever. I mean, it's it's been a long time since I've been that mad. Especially, you know, I mean, <laughs> I wasn't I wasn't involved with it. I wish I really could have went down. I do want to do the big races. It's just, you know, I haven't been able to make any SCDRA Northeast races, mainly because of schedule. I mean, it's 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 too hard. Especially, you know, my it's my old job. It was it was way too hard. So this year's gonna be a little different. And um, you know, I I'm gonna have time now. So uh, you know, I'm I'm really looking forward to this year. Even with running that pure stock, I'm still going to be running the CDRA Northeast uh, as many races as Sweet. I can. But it's going to be more. But I, so I want to say that first and foremost, because because you know someone's going to say, well, you don't even show up, you don't even support them. But no, I I do, and I'm listen. The whole reason why I made this podcast was for the small guy. You know what I mean? Like it's it's not oh, for yeah. Bloomquest or none of that. No, it's not Max Plus. It's not for none of them guys. It's it's for the small guy, the guy you know who's who needs the damn tow money to get home? You know what I'm saying? Because that there happens all the time. You know what I mean? There you That's... go. Well, well, not even not even just that. Um, uh, when you look at it from a fan's perspective, people a lot of people like to think fans shouldn't have an opinion, but in my in my opinion. Fans should have plenty of opinion because uh, that's that's what we got to go sit there and watch. That's why they're paying their money to get into the stands to have good races. So, uh, so, 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 what's your gripe with it? Okay, so, um, what watching it last night? I mean, first of all, I don't know, I don't know all the details, but I'm so right now. I'm just gonna assume uh, with them getting rained out on Friday, they moved everything to Saturday. Well, obviously the um, the eighteen thousand to win SCDRA should be the top. That's the main event. That's what you know everyone's tuning in for. I know they had um, super late models. Uh, they had street stocks. They had um, I don't know if they had six hundred twos or six hundred fours. They had another uh, late model class, and then they had the um, small miniature uh, late models and modifieds. I don't know if I said that one or if modifieds and street stocks. So they had five other classes. Yeah. So, with 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 that being said, the the one that gets pushed out of the way and made room for should be the SCDRA. They ran no heat races, which that's fine. They want to do, um, you know, qualifying and then B mains. But the but here here's my problem. I don't know if it was Screvern who kind of pushed it on them, like, hey, you know, you're gonna have to get these cars out. You know, this, we got to move quickly as possible. Which, if you needed more time, drop two classes. Really, if you think you're going to be tight on time, you needed to drop two classes because they put four um, B mains together with 24 cars or something in it a piece. There was 124 cars down there, and I did the math. So the 124 cars had a pre-register, all right, and that is like 18 grand or 17,000, something like that, because it's 150 dollars a piece. Right. Then, you, then when the driver gets there, he's got to pay 30 bucks for him and the car to get in. So that's another, you know, four grand or something for 120 something, 124 cars. Then let's just say someone brought another guy. Listen, they they were making a bunch of money. They could have easily, you know, that was the money maker for tonight. And they had sponsors that I imagine helped out with the purse and everything. So really, Screvin was making a lot of money for the one race out of the whole year. The SC, uh, the four cylinders are the show. So cater to them. And they didn't get catered to at all. Um, the <clears throat> so out of the four B mains, they had the twenty-something cars in there. They had a time limit, and uh, like I was actually telling you before the uh, podcast, was I was watching the races before, waiting for them to come up, and like the super lates weren't even in staging. You know, they kept calling for them, and calling for them, and waiting. Next thing you know, ten, fifteen minutes goes by, they finally get their five out there. And it's not like they had a whole, and it's not like they had a big, you know, car count with the super lates, but they get them out there finally after 15 minutes. You know, they they get their um, three uh, heats or four heats in, and then um, the street stocks came out. They had a bunch of cautions, 
the mods came out, they had a bunch of cautions. I think like seven, eight cautions in the one modified. I think it was Heat 3. Then the four-cylinders come out. The first B-Main was fine. They ended up pushing through them. You know, it wasn't too bad. I think they had one caution, two cautions. And then um, the second one got a time limit. And the third one, I think, finished. And the fourth one got a time limit, I believe. Or it was, uh, they all got time. The, the second, third, and fourth one all reached a time limit. My personal opinion, there should have been no time limit. Um, and, and here's why. The, uh, you had guys traveling from Michigan, from you know up here in PA, from uh, Iowa, from, from all over the place. Give everybody a fair shake. So they hit that time huh. limit. The guy who was in the sixth spot, which I did see a race where the guy in the sixth, because they were taking top five, the sixth and the seventh, was definitely yeah. faster than the guys in front of them. They would have made the show. Not have to go through provisional. Yeah. But they got screwed out of that. Well, well, I'm on. Uh, I'm. I'm. I'm going to play devil's advocate here yeah. real quick. Yep. Oh yeah. Um, and not not even saying I agree with my own opinion, but I'm. A, I'm going to play the devil's advocate here a minute. A uh, few years, I think it's. It had to be about four years ago now. Uh, me and Sterling went to that race. Um. And I will say, I think they ran it better at that point in time than they are now because it it actually was a, a world outlaw super late model race uh world outlaw sanction where this one was only the uh, southern all-star series um but the they actually had midgets and they had the sharp mini late models but they were not racing on the big track they were racing there's a little track behind it called gamecock speedway it's actually a go-kart track with concrete walls, I feel for any go kart racer that has raced that track. <laughs> but uh, but uh, they ran on the midgets and the sharp mini late models ran on that track, and they put on one of the best shows I've ever seen for a racing. Period. It was the perfect size track for those cars. Well, something has happened. I don't know if too many go kart racers hit that wall on that uh, on that little track, but they're not using that track anymore. They've put everything over to the big track, but they're not getting ready in classes. Um, so, so in in playing devil's advocate, uh, that track for whatever reason I haven't figured out. They also have a, they have a uh a dr big drag strip there. They have a big concert venue there, uh, and I want to say there's like a motocross track at the back or something like that. Uh, there's all kind of motorsport stuff there. So. They put on a dirt race a year, and for many, many years, it was only that one race that they put on a year. So that's why they had so many classes there in one day. Mm -hmm. When we went, and th and this is the part that I'm really getting at. When we went, um, I want to say the SEDRA, if if it was even that at the time, uh, race was paying ten thousand to win. They had over. They had about the same amount of entries, a uh, hundred and some odd entries. But they started every one of them. They qualified them and just started in the order that they qualified. So it was just this insane race. Um, they didn't throw many. If you just spun out and spun to the inside, they did not throw a caution. It was it. It honestly was a uh, enduro. It, yeah, it was more of an enduro, I guess you say. Um, but it was almost somewhat of a joke. I mean, honestly, and. I guess I'm going to say the problem is I'm, I'm going to go away from the devil's advocate side here. The problem is, is uh, that's how they're still looking at this class is, you know, kind of a joke. So they throw it to the end when in all actuality, it, it, it's a race. It's a, it's a well-paying race. There's many, many super late model guys that would love to race for $18,000. Any night, most time they're ten, fifteen at most. So, well, yeah, I'm I'm with you when it, when it's when it's there, we we got to do something. Yeah, and that's and and to be honest, everybody, the reason why I brought David really on here, and I asked him, you know, I specifically asked for David. I didn't want anybody else because I I want someone who's <laughs> not biased because I am. I'm not gonna lie, I am. I mean, watching that, I mean, that's I was, that's why I was getting you know pretty much filled with rage because, like like you said, it, it's taken as a joke, and that's. No, yeah, that's the pinnacle. That that the winter freeze, and and I'm not putting any problem or any of the blame 
really on SC Derek. Because I imagine their hands had to have been tied somewhere. You know, Kelly's hands had to have been tied somewhere. And I would love to get her on a podcast one of these times. Um, so, you know, to where they were figuring out how many cars they were going to put in the B, you know, because I, I imagine some pressure was applied. So I'm putting all, all the blame on Screvern and I guess kind of somewhat on, on SCDRA because they should have told Screvern, listen, you ain't going to take us seriously. We're putting up this kind of money, putting a lot of time and effort into this, making these guys travel all over the place. We'll, we'll go somewhere else because I just said what how much it made. And that was just entries. That's not concession. That's not nothing. You know what I mean? They brought a lot of money to the area down there, renting out hotels, stuff like that. So it, it's it's a really good event to have because of, of the money that it brings. And if Screvin ain't gonna, if they're taking advantage of it, well then see you later. There's there's I imagine you could probably throw a a rock and hit another track. You know what I'm saying? I mean, there, there's one right I, down the road that will take that opportunity all day, right? Oh, we did. We take it up here at Lake Lakeview or something or any day. I promise you. So, uh, but um, I'm gonna go back to it a minute. I'm gonna tell you my reasoning and why I think it still looked at that way. Um, I've watched, I've watched pilot these races. Uh, I, I will say Lakeview, as I just said, that's one of the biggest classes each and every week at at Lakeview. Um there's probably 20 to 25 SCDRA cars each week over there. And they have, I will, I will give it to them because they have started taking that class a little more serious. It still gets kicked to the tail of the, of the, of the lineup most of the time, but they know that there's people that are racing. There's a lot of people that are building nice cars now. Well, the problem was, Years past, um, when that when that first started, when the front wheel drive four cylinder stuff first started coming out, and and I've said this even on our podcast before, that is the car now. In all actuality, that was, you know, if you look back at it in the eighties, that you know people went to junkyard got an old car. That was street stock class or whatever they want to call it, factory stock. Well, the SEDRA style car now is that nowadays because you don't go to the junkyard anymore and find a old rear wheel drive car, yeah, uh, that big old body and weighs thirty five hundred pounds. You don't find that. You find a front wheel drive four cylinder car most of the time now. But they're not getting that respect, and I and I guess it's just we still have a lot of old guys and with the old thoughts about it in in the sport and. But now, in our area, it was when it started, and I'm down here closer to Scriven, I guess. So, in our area, it's that was a class that the kids bought cars to race and and did what they should be doing. That's exactly what they should be doing. And it a lot of times, I will say, it became a wreck fest when you watch that those races. But I've also went, you know, when you've posted up videos of you racing and stuff like that on Facebook and whatever else, I've watched that. And man, you guys up there drive like you got some sense in those cars. It's not just <laughs> half a half a lap wreck, half a lap wreck, half a lap wreck. But for years down here, that's all it was. It was them boys go in there, throw it in turn one, and just hit somebody. It yeah. was like bumper cars out there. And I think they're still in the mindset. So that uh that's what this race still is and so they're like if it gets run great if not oh well i don't care but no I, i'm with you on that's not how we should be looking at it because like you said that's eighteen thousand dollar win race in my opinion that should have been if you're gonna run a race before it i know the uh, southern all-star series was there super late models and i know when you bring a super late model event they like to take precedent uh, and i whether i agree with it or not i get it um but even if you were going to run the all the the super late models first all right turn around next second race let's run the big race of the night eighteen thousand dollar win race because yeah super late models draw a big crowd but regardless what class it is if it's paying big money that also draws a big crowd 
and just like you were talking about people coming in with them, um, I've looked at it before, uh, looked at the numbers and talked to a bunch of track owners. You can normally count. I don't care what class it is. Most people, when they go to race, four people come in to the pits with them. Yeah. And most of the time, on average, you can average it out to four people, not counting the people that also come in the stands because a lot of times, uh, you know, they don't want to pay the higher pit fee. So they'll just family sits out in the stands because they got 15 head of them out there because you're racing for $18,000 a win that night. Yeah. So it, it doesn't make any sense to me to push that to the back. And, uh, and I think they're kind of doing the fans an injustice when they do that. Um, because they're there to watch their driver. They're there to watch that race. Why would you put, and I'm not dogging on them, but why would you put sharp mini late models up there when they're racing for probably $700 to win? Yeah. Why would you put that before? I don't, I don't get that way of thinking in my opinion. Uh, the only possible reason I could see is, tr is because of the track itself. If they think something is going to tear up the track, because I will say when we went down there and watched all them cars start, there was car, they flipped cars. They did everything. They tore the track up. They really did. And it would have been terrible to race on after that race. So uh, it, that may be the only thing that they're looking at, but I don't, I don't get that myself. Yeah. And I, I was, you know, um, and, and so two, so I'm going to answer two of your, or reply back to the two things you said. You said that the, um, you know, the older guys, you know, kind of you're still kind of looking down on them and stuff and are they are they i mean it's now the, i'm saying the majority because the majority, majority of the car count is four cylinders the same way up here and you know like i said with and they all bring their fans so is it i don't know you know what i mean i'd say it, it's nowadays it's getting close to where you know i, I think they they really need to and this is one thing i love about latrobe and everyone can say what what they want. How I'm always on here loving loving Latrobe, but um, you know they they treat us like a class up there. And guess what? We we treat each other as race car drivers. We were respectful. And um, the uh, I mean we run second. We run so you, you, so if you're gonna say about the track, us trenching the track, we're tearing up the track. I mean really, you know, and there's 20 of us, 25 of us every now and then to run a B main. But um, we're always around 20 that that start, and yeah, you know, so there'll be some nights, you know, we're running over each other. I mean, it it's, it happens. It's racing. It's every class. And there's some nights we'll go green, you know, green flag the whole way. I mean, I got whenever I won down there, we we started green and we finished green. I mean, there was no cautions, and um, uh, so so you have them, and you know, Latrobe does such a good job down there with their track prep and everything that we run second. So how so how are you gonna sit here and tell me you guys will trench the track, tear up the track? The only thing I could say is the rollovers and stuff. I agree with you there, David. I agree. But I'm saying just trenching the track, that if the track's good enough, it'll take it. It'll take it. So I mean we're not on oh, I... little, you know, five inch rims anymore. We're on seven, you know, facet racing wheels. You know, we got we got a little more wider of a I mean, because actually, uh, pure stocks or factory stocks or bombers, or whatever you want to call them, they're on an eight inch. So they got we got just as much now as them, um, you know, tread wise and rim on the track. I agree with you. Uh, I agree. Um, and in all actuality, and my way of thinking is, if you're going to run them, run anything after the super late models, that track is packed hard as a brick most of the time after that, unless it's just a mud hole, and you're not going to hurt that track either. Yeah, and I mean, watching last night, I saw you know a few, um, uh, a, a few of the a few ruts and stuff that were that were in the track, but it, the track didn't look bad. It it really didn't. So I mean, and then you, I know you're saying about like them beating them banging. Well, like I said, they started in the B mains, like twenty something cars in each B main. So and them guys, they're running for an eighteen. You know what I mean? Some of them guys, they you know, you know how much that, that would help them and. Another thing too is that everyone talks about money. I'm gonna tell you something right now. I'm building a pure stock. I'm building. And it's gotta be 358. Um, you know, I gotta have you know stock mounts and stuff and all that. And I went out and bought a Ford Nine and all that stuff. And I added it up. My my neon, which I, to be honest with you, I went down there. I bet you I probably could have made the show, but I would have been in the back. 
but um, I wouldn't have been up with Wyndham and, you know, I mean, even Rob Williams, I mean, he his car actually was fast. He was taking it easy and ended up getting in some trouble. And uh, I can't remember the, um, mm-hmm. I think Anderson's his last name. He he runs up here and stuff. And like some of them TBG tune guys. But I got more money Build, building that pure stock to, to the to the brim of of the rules, maybe even bending them rules a little bit. I got more money in my neon. So when it when it comes to money oh, now, bet. you know this this isn't this isn't a joke. I mean, some guys are putting you know, 20, 25. I mean, I don't know how much Wyndham has, but man, he's fast. I know he's got to have a good 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 chunk in it. You know what I mean? So uh, there's there's no when it comes to SCDRA, especially them guys who are making a show. That is not a car that they just went to the junkyard and then and then ripped out. You know, there's that's not um, that's you ain't gonna be competitive that way. You got to put money into it. So with all these guys putting, oh, money, I agree, putting the money, the time, the travel, all that stuff, you know, coming down to Scrabbering and Scrabbering doing them uh, an injustice or un, uh, injustice, however you say it. Um, <laughs> they, they, uh, <clears throat> they, you know, with the time stuff, and then I'm gonna take a shot at flow here because I don't know, I don't know how that all that works, but the Shark Mini light models were. Right before him, the uh, the announcer was announcing the race. The B mains come out. That's everyone's time to shine. I mean, they didn't get heat races. That them them technically kind of are their heats. Timing and scoring right. wasn't working. It wasn't up. I didn't in the first one. I didn't know who the hell was in the front. And then uh, for the second one too, the guy ended up coming back and you know to take a shot at him. He's talking about food. He's not calling. He's not doing these guys, you know, the the respect they deserve for traveling and putting all that time and effort and money in to to this race. I mean, I'm not talking about a Friday night at your local track. I'm talking about the top race of it all when it comes to four cylinders. That's the race. It ain't the King of Compacts. It ain't Bristol. It ain't Eldora. It's not um, Midway up here for that the, for the SCDR Northeast guys. Midway is 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 you know the top, but. This the, the payout of this race overrides all of them, so so this is the pinnacle of the four cylinder class. They get treated like that. Like I was telling Levi um, earlier today, whenever I talked to him, I says, in in all honesty, if you're talking about money, if you're talking about car count, you're talking about money now, any of that. The the four cylinders is above street stocks, pure stocks, legends any other little micro whatever um you know i mean when it comes to money i tell you what i I don't know how much a 305 would cost like in a sprint car but Mm -hmm. i know how much chassis cost and i know how much like i have in my car and it'd it'd probably be cheaper for me to go to to a um a sprint car to be honest i I mean i don't know what you can get them for motors but let's just say 10 grand no they're cheaper than that (laughs) Okay. They're then, way cheaper than that. Then, then, <laughs> then, uh, then you know, a, a wingless 305 or, or whatever. Uh, hey, we're above them. Oh yeah. You know, I mean. Oh yeah, you are. <laughs> it's 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 you know what 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 do we got to do here? And then it doesn't help whenever a, a track like that, you know, um, in lack of a better term, shits on you. I mean, yeah. I, I'm 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 like I said, I'm so worked up about it because I know the time and effort these guys put in, and I know how much time and effort. You know Kelly, and then you know, even Rob up here at SCDRA um, Northeast does, and to to have a track, you know, after you put in all your time and effort to not even care at the pinnacle race, I mean, no wonder why we can't be taken seriously because the tracks, the, the the track that you chose, won't won't take you seriously. And I think my my opinion, um, if I was anyone who had any kind of um, you know voice. I guess, or any kind of power over that series, I would have told them to kick rocks. We ain't ever coming back. You ain't getting that money because, you know, I added it up. Um, just, you know, I averaged two people. You said four. I averaged two. It was over like 26 grand. Oh, yeah. Easy. Easy. Easy over that. And, uh, it's, well, going back to the announcer, Dwayne gets hungry, man. He he just hungry. That, that's fine. He picked he, but but in all <laughs> no, reality, he he picked the worst. Oh, he's a hell of an announcer, man. Is he good? I love listening to Dwayne. <laughs> he is really good, and uh, um, yeah, he he makes a a race that single foul. You know, 
entertaining. He does he does a fantastic job. But I'm just saying, at that time, dude, oh. go, go 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 get your you know your food whenever the Shark Mini Light models are out there, not whenever the Pinnacle Race is out there. The the, the right. I, and, and I'm going to agree with you. Um, I, I can't I can't I can't play devil's advocate for the whole thing because I'm going to agree with you. And like I just said, if a little while ago, uh, when you got a race paying eighteen thousand dollars to win, when it's the biggest paying race at your track that night it should be treated as the main event. Yeah. I'm on, uh, and obviously, like you just said, it's, it's one of the biggest SCDRA main events throughout the entire year. So it, it needs to be treated as such because I'm, I'm a proponent of, and everybody that has listened to our podcast knows, I don't care what you drive personally. We'll get you on the show. You know, if it's Tyler, he's driving a four cylinder, we'll put him last on the show. But, you know. <laughs> that, yeah, yeah. So you, you've done it. You have done it. <laughs> oh, man. I'm so worked up. I forgot about that. You know, that I had, that was my perfect opportunity to take a shot. <laughs> I took it myself. I took it myself. Don't worry. But, oh, but no, it's, uh, I, I'm a proponent of, I don't, like I just said, I don't care what class it is. And I think uh, I, I'm, I'm one that I hate when, um, I got, we got a local track here that every week, the big race of the week of the weekly series is the, uh, late model stocks. And this is an asphalt track. I don't think it should be that. I think it needs to be rotated around. I think every class needs uh, a big race night um, or multiple a year at each track. Um, and when they're the big race, they need to be treated as such. I don't care because, <laughs> I mean, I know it's a long shot, but who knows? There's, there could be the next Kyle Larson driving one of those cars in any class, but let's just go with SCDRA because that's what we're, we're talking about. There could be the next Kyle Larson driving one of them at 12 years old out there now. And it needs to be treated as such because there's no other way. And I've talked with a lot of uh, marketing people now and stuff like that. There's no way to get anybody's name out in anything if they're not going to announce it and treat it as such when there's a race. So you're doing nothing but trying to kill a class if you don't treat it as a main event when it is the main event. So it, and that's from a, uh, a, you know, a, uh, looking at it from a driver's perspective and looking at it from a fan perspective, because there's, there's been so many classes come around that as a fan, they, they look great and look cool, uh, to watch. And then they get no respect, I guess you say, and, they killed a class. So uh you, you've got to give the class some respect. Uh I don't care what class it is, you got to respect the class because those guys are out there working their hardest on those cars each week. I don't care what class it is. Uh they're working their hardest to to entertain your fans that paid to get into your track. So yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm with you. They need to they need to be treated as such. Yeah, and, and you know, they started forty six cars last night. And um, I paid attention, and I was, you know, talk, telling myself this because I already knew I was going to be talking about this today. And um, you know, I was, I was watching. I said, "Come on, guys, I, I want to make this point because I'm going to shut anybody up who says it." And I tell you what, they came through. So the I don't, I don't think I brought it up, but the um, the race, like I said, the race before was a, uh, I think it was 30 laps or something, but it was uh, modifieds. Street stocks were worse, but but the modifieds is that's the one I kind of tuned into, waiting for the guys that go out and um there was seven cautions before halfway they only ran 30 laps and you want to talk about the four mm-hmm. cylinders i know they were ca- counting caution laps but i mean they had two they had they did have two red flags but they had less than that by the time they hit halfway and that's 50 laps so you want to say bang bangers wow. and guys you know hitting so let's just take 20 off and they're they're even but i don't hear anybody saying anything about the modifieds you know, you know what I mean? And all the cautions, hey, everybody, they they bang bang modifieds. You know what I mean? That that, and what I've what I've realized, especially you know, like talking to people like you, Levi, you know, from from around different states. I had Levi on here, and he said it. He says your guys is four cylinders up there, and you know, it's to, to me, you know, the the guys down south, they put 
a lot of money in them because that's where most of the big money races is. Now it's up here too. It's kind of kind of split, especially this year with the schedule that came out for the Northeast. But he said that the the cars down there where there's really not no money, they are like a, you know, like how you said with the kids. You know what I mean? You know, a lot of beating, a lot of bang, a lot of fights, stuff like that. Up here, there's there's there's, yeah. there's, there's not that. You know what I mean? We we try, you know, because we all have, and the reason why is, look at their cars down there in Ohio, and look at ours. You know what I mean? There, oh, there's some good cars down there. There's a there's a real nice Honda. It's gray. I can't can't remember uh, the number of it. I think it's 132. I can't. Yeah, so it is 132. Then you got the guy who runs a, that right. Ford Focus six pack stuff. You know, like I I I watch the races. You know, I, I see you know who's from where and stuff. And you know, them guys got some good cars. And guess what? They were down there last night. But majority is. Um, you know, they probably have, you know, 2,500, three grand tops in most of them cars down there. That's not how it is up here. Not even close. I mean, yeah. if you got 25, three grand, I mean, you ain't making a show half the time. So, I mean, you got to put, you got to put money into it. Cause that's how that's this class evolved, you know, back in the day, you know, when I used to race in 2007, 2008, 2009, stuff like that. I remember guys who were running PVC fight for roll cages. I mean, cause it was a, you know, straight up. Uh, get it from the junkyard, knock the windows out, throw a cage, you're done. That's what it was. It is not like it. It has evolved, like you said, uh, all the street stocks. That's just going back to that. And, um, you know, they, I mean, I don't know. I mean, really, I mean, like, a, if you ask anybody who's starting up a, let's just say you'd ask anyone who is going to start up a, a, a track, okay? And this is one of the biggest rants we've ever been on. We're going on 40 minutes here, and we appreciate everybody listening. <laughs> but uh, but if you're going to ask anybody, you know, if they're going to open up a track, what's the one class you know they're going to have? They're going to have four cylinders. Why? That's the money. Oh, yeah. That's the money. So guess what? Treat us like how, you know, treat us. If you want respect back, that's why, uh, you know, like I said, I started this podcast. And because the big guys don't respect us, so I don't respect the big guys. And that's just my opinion. I mean, you know, and, and same with these track owners and stuff. And you saw it last night at Scriven. They did not respect the four-cylinder drivers. So I am not respecting them at all. And, you know, they – we we know our worth. And, you know, because we are the money. We're the one who's paying all the other payouts for every other division that is so-called better than the four-cylinders. You know, I mean, they got to start treating them – treating us the – Honestly, how we deserve. I mean, period. Yeah, you that's got it. it. <laughs> that's it. I mean, <laughs> I just don't. I mean, it's it's like talking to a brick wall half the time. Whenever you know you, and it, <laughs> it's like I'm saying this stuff, and a lot of people agree with me, and it's just it just ain't happening. I mean, me and my uncle kind of uh, you know get into it all the time. He goes, "Yeah, you won't get out of four cylinders. You know, you don't want to be in the four. I says, "What are you talking about?" I says, "They got. I mean, this year and that's CDRA Northeast. I mean, there's." The minimum's two grand to win, and they got races, you know, two, three times a month. And there's some fives in there. There's some, you know, twenty five hundreds. I mean, there's money. You, you, you definitely can be running for some money, and um, every little bit helps. I mean, especially when when you got that kind of cash in them cars. I mean, it's it it seriously takes a lot. And um, I just hope that you know uh, some people get their heads out of the rear end and you know start realizing it. And, I mean, they, they do realize they won't admit it because, like I said, you ask any uh, track owner, they're going to pick four cylinders, definitely number one. I had a, a, a talk last year with a promoter, and, um, you know, I said, hey, you know, unless you get rid of these guys, I'm not coming back. Uh, um, I will drive past your uh, track. I will travel an hour past your track, past you, to save myself four hours in a garage I mean, or five hours in a garage That's or whatever right. it is. And uh, he goes, I understand. He goes, I, he's like, obviously, I can't get rid of the four cylinders. I'm like, okay. Well, then I know where I, you know, where you understand where I'm at. I understand where you're at. So we'll see what happens. And then the following week, they ended up suspending one of them. But they didn't, didn't you know, they didn't do what I, you know, it's not, I'm not the, the promoter. I was just telling them as a racer, dude, come on. I'm not going to come out here week after week and just keep getting, you know, my stuff broke. Whenever I'm, you know, trying to race, it's not a derby. So. And uh, right. so whatever, but that's a whole nother thing. But yeah, I mean, I, I think I got it out. I think I got it out of my system and you got it out now. I, I think I, I better. Think, yeah. Oh man. I tell you, <laughs> Kel called me last night. He shouldn't, he should have not have called me. 
Oh, it was it well, was rough. Well, well, I'll send you my therapist fee here shortly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, all right, well, Mr. Promoter. I, I, all right, well, Mr. Promoter, put on your promoter shoes now. Um, I want to know how you feel about jumping starts. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay. 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 Yep. Yep. You got me there. You got me there. For what? Uh, for people listening, um, what Dave's talking about is. Uh, we start. It was at what Knoxville, right? Yeah, and he started on a pole. Knoxville. Started, the one time I was running good. <laughs> <laughs> he started on a pole. I started on an outside pole, and um, and you know, in I racing, you gotta. I got two buttons on the wheels to look left and look right. So with me being on the outside, I, I can't really see. So I'm I'm trying to stay you know close to him, and I just go by sound. And well, we went back and watched the footage. Someone behind you went to go, and I heard their car. So I figured he went. And so I took off, but, uh, yeah, I jumped that start pretty bad. <laughs> was, All right. Like, as long as you oh, admitted it now. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I don't think I've talked to you really about that since that, but I definitely got in, uh, after and was telling Cole and Kel and all them. I'm like, yeah, I went back and watched. I jumped that damn start. <laughs> so that's all. Uh, hey, I didn't it win. was so hard for me. It was so hard for me not to key up this past Tuesday when you said, <laughs> Stars are on the leader. What are we going? <laughs> what are we going? <laughs> oh, man. Is the leader on the inside or the outside this week? <laughs> yeah. We, we, which leader? <laughs> the outside leader? What are we going on? Oh, man. That was, that was, that was fun. Oh, uh, it was fun. <laughs> it, it didn't matter. I ended up wrecking anyway. I got wrecked. And after that, I was just, no. Nah, it was after, it was doing somebody. I don't even remember who it was. They just came in the corner. I was on your bumper. And they just yeah. came in the corner and never lifted. Oh man, I tell you that you know, I you know, touching on our racing real quick. I mean, I don't know what it is, man. That I, especially in them street stocks, they they changed something because nothing nothing's adding up. I mean, how it used to be. I know the dirt uh, tire model and stuff changed a lot, but it is uh, it's a lot different. I mean, how the tracks come in, like dude, the bottom wasn't even in to at keep... all at at Knoxville or North Volusia. No, it came in the uh, the bottom come, uh, in three and four came in at Volusia late in the race because me and Levi found it and we ended up moving moving up a good bit there in the final I don't know probably ten laps um, just by hitting the bottom in three and four at Volusia but it that's only place it came in it was not in in one and two at all. Crazy stuff, I think it's just but... taking longer. I, well, I think what it is is a lot of people like sitting on longer races now, and it was coming in so fast, and track was just going away so fast. I think they're trying to make it so track lasts a little longer. Yeah, yeah, I, I could definitely. Maybe see we just need to run like sixty lap races. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know before, like in a uh, in a you know, let's say a forty lap Volusia, I used to run the heck out of Volusia. So, um, in forty laps, if I started it. You know, either thirty percent, thirty-five percent, or whatever. I mean, it, I couldn't pick any really. Uh, eventually, the the top's gonna go away, the bottom's gonna come in, the bottom's gonna go away, and the middle's gonna come in. That's how it used to. You know, so yeah. you'd have for you know two, three laps, you'd actually have two lines. You know, right. Um, so so really, so for if you're running thirty you know, or forty laps for ten, fifteen of them laps, you actually have two racing lines that are fast. You know, so. Uh, and you know it, it causes for great racing, but now it's right. I, I don't I don't see that I I can't wait for the other cars to come out because that's where I, that's where I'm going to be I'm kind of just in limbo right now waiting for the the monies and the four cylinders to come out which that is surprising. It is surprising, and which is still has it actually been confirmed yet? I know uh, Dale Junior said something, but was yeah, it ever actually confirmed that all that's coming up? No, no. But if Junior said it to Trading Paints. Why would he lie? I would assume. Yeah, why would he lie? No, I, he has, I agree. He, he's got nothing to gain from it and nothing to lose. So, I mean, just what's coming out? Okay, these cars. Okay, cool. <laughs> it's going to so, be fun. So, I mean, because really, what other cars could they really bring out? They got three um, different kind of modifieds. They got three different kinds of sprint cars. and I could models. name some asphalt stuff, but as far as dirt stuff, they're, they're, they're about done. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So, 
But hey, man, I really appreciate you coming on here, and uh, it was uh, you know definitely um, definitely a good episode. And uh, well, I'll have to get you back on here soon, man. It's it's always a good time whenever whenever you get up on here. For sure, man. Anytime. I appreciate it. All right, man. We'll see you. All right, dude. And that was David Rogers, everybody, uh, from Chicken Bone Alley Podcast. Really glad he was able to, you know, come on with me here and, um, you know, discuss uh, discuss what happened, you know, yesterday and and everything. And you know, I mean, it's it's just an ongoing thing. You know, even like with Bristol and, um, you know, just not getting the respect that, uh, you know, that that the fourth owner class deserves. And um, you know, that's why I made this podcast. And you know, I'm just hoping. Uh, you know, to shed some light on, on, on the situation and get, you know, some people's eyes open uh, to realize, you know, I mean, we put a lot of work, um, and, you know, all the guys, you know, <clears throat> especially like everyone who went down um, this past weekend, you know, they got they put a lot of work in their cars and, you know, sacrificed a lot. So for them not to get treated right, it's just, uh, it's just, that it's ain't right in the, in the least bit. So, but a huge shout out to, um, uh, Kelly with the SCDRA and uh, Rob with the SCDRA Northeast. I mean, I sit here saying all this stuff, but, you know, really hats off to them. I, I know it takes a lot. Uh, it, it's got to take a lot, you know, to, to run everything, answer all the questions, you know, make sure everything runs smoothly, you know, then you, you know, think about weather and stuff for um, for the events and uh, for the races and, you know, just uh, huge hats off to them. Really would like to have Rob on here over the next couple of weeks and, um, you know, maybe even get Kelly on here too. I think that would be great and, you know, a, lot, a lot of questions I'd, I'd definitely ask her, um, or both of them rather. But, uh, yeah, I appreciate everybody listening here, and um, we will catch you on the next episode.